Newly created robots have recently started beating real human athletes so badly, that their creators believe, the time by which human athletes will be completely replaced by robots due to not having any chance of beating them, being less than 25 years in the future. This is at least the objective of the FIRA, which organizes the yearly world championships for robot soccer. The sports competition pushes innovators and researchers to outperform one another in terms of creativity. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you which robot is easily outperforming its human counterparts at almost 100% consistency, which sports will get completely dominated by robots in the very near future, and finally, how the artificial intelligence and hardware inside those robots actually does what it does to be this good at sports. Sporting events are a wonderful method to promote new ideas. Consider cycling. Even the forefathers of today's conventional low-wheeler, trolley, and, notably, high-wheeler were largely employed as sporting equipment. In the early 1960s, one-day races were staged. At epic races like the 1200-kilometer Paris-Brest Paris, it was also important to demonstrate that the bicycle was on par with the coach as a mode of public transportation accessible to all segments of the population. And even people who are only casually interested in cycling realize how many inventions have been produced here, not only on the bike but also on humans. On a recumbent bike, bikers can now attain speeds of slightly about 140 km per hour, not downhill, but on a flat road under their own power. If the athletes are not humans but machines, the sports competition may also be used as an invention laboratory. Competitions in which humans battled against robots have long been appealing. Konrad Zeus, the inventor of the first functional computer, created chess algorithms that were meant to challenge and destroy human players. It took 50 years for Garry Kasparov, the reigning world champion at the time, to lose to the supercomputer Deep Blue in 1997. Chess is predictable, which makes it simple for the machine. This is not true of the board game Go. It was not deemed calculable due to the significantly greater number of playable versions than chess. This obstacle took the developers slightly under 20 years to overcome. Google Software Alpha Go defeats Go Pro Lee Settle in 2016. This win demonstrated that learning, artificial neural networks are capable of solving issues on their own in ways that humans would not. However, being intelligent and capable of learning is essential for a robot, but it is not sufficient. To be deemed such, he must also have a body and be able to govern it. And there is still a significant deficit. Because, while in certain instances, such as welding robots on assembly lines, may execute motions more forcefully, quickly, and intentionally than a human could ever accomplish. Until recently, robots could not achieve the range of motion that any halfway healthy human person can generate or acquire in a very short period of time. The Ski Robot Challenge, which took place in Pyeongchang during the 2018 Winter Olympics, clearly showed this. The robots, which resemble human athletes, crashed in rows down the comparatively level slope. At halftime of the men's preliminary round game between the United States and France on Sunday at the Tokyo Olympics, a basketball-playing robot drew everyone's attention. Toyota designed the seven-foot-tall basketball robot. It utilizes sensors in its torso to detect the basket's distance and angle, and motorized arms and knees to perform set shots. With its exciting style of play, the robot wearing jersey number 95 became the game's talking point. The robot can make some deep shots, as seen by its ability to hit a free throw, a three-pointer, and a half-court shot while surpassing several top players and winning everyone's heart. Yes, it's impressive, but pro ballers may take consolation in the robot's sluggish setup. It took around five seconds to line up its half-court shot, and while its aim was quite accurate, the robot appeared to move slowly overall. It looked to be a Toyota robot, which was originally developed in 2018. In 2019, CUE3, the third model, achieved a Guinness World Record for most consecutive basketball free throws by a humanoid robot. The robot made 2,000 free throws in 6 hours and 35 minutes, stopping at that amount as a tribute to the impending Tokyo Olympics. Basketball, on the other hand, is not ideal for teaching robots as a whole the abilities that would eventually transform them into humanoids. This comprises, according to Wikipedia, planning, learning, sensory, motor abilities, reactive behavior, swarm coordination, 
self-localization, and path planning. All of this is what football, the most popular sport in the world, is all about. This is where robots are expected to outperform human athletes in the near future. The Federation of International Robot Sport Associations has set a goal of having a robotic team defeat the reigning world champion by 2050. That appears to be ambitious. Certain robot soccer categories, for which an annual world championship has been held since 1997, are more akin to lawn chess than a dynamic soccer game. In the humanoid adult size final category, a human assistant stands behind the robot athlete in case he or she falls. Robot soccer games, like professionals, are not cheap. Funny thing is, despite the fact that the soccer robots can't even stand up straight, they're pretty excellent at foul play. Other categories are already more strategic and active. The players, on the other hand, resemble rolling tiny cubes rather than athletes. However, in the RoboCup League, there are several additional disciplines in which the robots can compete, even off the pitch. Competitions for rescue, transportation, and aid robots, for example, are held. The organizers are also adjusting the circumstances under which the robot athletes must compete with one another to more closely resemble the genuine football experience. For example, the advent of artificial grass a few years ago presented the development teams with the largest hurdle in the RoboCup's history. The robots were imbalanced due to the blade length of 3 centimeters. Ground contact was no longer direct, but rather varied. But that's how it works with sports organizations. Their rules and restrictions are frequently criticized by the players themselves. Why should robotic athletes be any different? The RoboCup has been going for 25 years and has a permanent presence in more than 60 countries. It has seen more than 500,000 players take part, and 40,000 teams compete. It has even played a role in the education of young people in the STEM fields, where science, technology, engineering, and mathematics are taught in schools. Furthermore, it has also provided a welcome source of income for the developing countries where it was founded. The first RoboCup championship was held in 1997 in Germany, with Japan and Germany emerging victorious, but the event came to a halt in 2007 due to lack of interest from the football players and the commercial sponsors. The event was subsequently rebooted in 2009 on a new platform. Many athletic events now function as entertainment. Even robotic duels have their supporters. One example is the giant robot duel, in which a 12-ton and 440-horsepower monster created by Megabots from the United States took against a somewhat smaller creation by Suidabashi Heavy Industry from Japan in a manufacturing hall. This Wrestling 2.0 will almost certainly include one or two inventions. Competitions whose laws are already structured to harness the human spirit of sport for the creation of inventions will undoubtedly give more useful insights. The RoboCup and RoboRace are two good instances of this. But first, let's return to the aforementioned cycling racing. Although the driving power in this sport is a human rather than a motor, robots are already exercising in this discipline, as this video illustrates. One human still determines where the robot goes using a radio remote control. The metal cyclist, on the other hand, can maintain his focus all by himself. So what is your opinion on the potential future where robots will outperform pretty much any team in pretty much any sport? Would people prefer to watch robots play sports against each other, or would they prefer the imperfect plays that humans would do with each other? Do you think that there are sports in which humans would always outperform robots in? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. So we've been competing at international robot competitions for a while. I think it's an excellent way to motivate your students, to validate your research, to form connections and networks with other researchers worldwide. Uh, it's a very nice community. Everybody feels like they're contributing their small part towards something greater. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.